Alright, what's up guys? So I want to talk about the importance of sunlight in regards to lucid dreaming and, uh, you know, sleeping better, energy, and your overall well-being in general. Because, so for those of you who don't know, I've been travelling around Asia. I'm currently in Vietnam and I've been staying in this place which doesn't have any windows. It's uh, part of a high-rise sort of apartment complex, but for some reason there just aren't any windows, so there's no natural light whatsoever uh, coming into the room. And before staying here, I had no idea that it was this, it had this much of an effect on your overall well-being because I've been feeling like fatigued a lot of the time. Um, and, you know, my wake up time has been so, it's been so difficult to wake up early. Um, normally I wake up anywhere between six and eight in the morning, but I've been waking up at sort of half nine, ten most days. I have actually woken up earlier a couple of days, but it's been really difficult. Um, and the, the, mess, the main reason for that it's just that there's no natural light coming into the room and it made me think about the importance of the sun and how your circadian rhythm plays a huge part in your overall energy levels and you know how specifically how you can lucid dream but also how you can feel throughout the day so i just want to recap this i made a video uh, a while ago and uh, you know in which i spoke about the circadian rhythm and how it affects lucid dreaming and that sort of stuff but it, it, this has really made me realise how important the sun and your circadian rhythm actually is to a huge number of different things. And I just want to recap why that is. So when the sun rises in the morning, what happens is we get a spike of serotonin, which is your one of your wake-up hormones. This is similar to adrenaline, but not quite the same. Uh, but it has a similar effect in that it sort of gets your blood flowing, it gets your heart rate slightly raised, and it generally wakes you up and makes you feel energetic. Now, this isn't a sudden spike. This is a sort of a gradual uprising in the... Uh, if, if it was on a chart, it would be sort of a gradual curve upwards throughout the early hours of the morning. It wouldn't be a sudden spike. And this happens when the sunlight enters our eyes. It can even enter our eyes through our eyelids because our eyelids are sort of... Uh, the light can pass through our eyelids if it's bright enough, right? That's why if you close your eyes in the middle of the day, you, you find it hard to keep them closed because the sun or, you know, the natural light still passes through your eyelids and makes you feel like, oh, I should open my eyes. So the sun still can pass through our eyelids. And so what happens is in the early hours of the morning, when the sun starts to rise, most of us who don't have blackout curtains will experience a slow, gradual rise of awareness and awakeness. Um, and this happens over the course of two or three hours. Most of the time we're not aware of this, we just are aware of the fact that we wake up in a moment, sort of in a split second, and then we're awake for the day. But what really happens is your body slowly wakes up over the course of about two hours um, based on the light, right? So the light will enter your eyes through your eyelids and gradually raise the levels of serotonin and a, ver a few various other different uh, hormones as well in to the point where it becomes so high in your in your body, in your bloodstream, that you wake up. And this is where it crosses over with, in, in terms of lucid dreaming. In the early hours of the morning, because you've already slept for a while, you've got a lot of melatonin in your system as well. So where these two cross over, okay, so where, we'll get onto how melatonin works in a second, but where these two cross over and you've got high levels of melatonin, you've already had your deep sleep and you've had several stages of REM, so you've, you've had your restorative deep sleep, but you're also raising your levels of serotonin because of the sun rising, you start to get into this sweet spot for OBEs and lucid dreams where they become much, much more likely. And I've always said this for any technique, it's always much more likely that you'll lucid dream in the early hours of the morning than at any other time. You know, it's not even close. You know, it's, it's much harder to lucid dream as soon as you go to sleep as you lay down than it is to lucid dream at 5am when you've already had a good few hours of deep sleep anyway. Now, recently I've been speaking about moving towards, you know, techniques that are more natural and more soft, I guess, on your body. Things that don't involve the weight back to bed in the wild. And, but even those, even those techniques, the, the method that you're using is still going to be focused on lucid dreaming at that time of the morning. That's just when it happens. In, in the vast majority of cases, the time that you lucid dream is the early hours of the morning regardless of which technique or method you're using. So, going back to the importance of the circadian rhythm, uh, it's really, it really is important that you let that sunlight wake you up gradually over the course of two hours in the morning, meaning it's important that you let the sunlight get into your room when it needs to. So, for me, the best, the best solution for this is to have curtains which are not completely blackout, regardless of what some people may say, but curtains which block out enough of the light that it's dark when you want to go to sleep, 
but curtains that also let enough light through in the morning if you have them closed. Now in an ideal world we would have really smart curtains which, and you, they are on the market, they're just quite expensive, we'd have quite expensive smart curtains where we shut them at night or you know we press a button and they, and they close themselves at night, it blocks all the light out, you go to sleep and then in the morning at a certain time they very slowly open before sunrise so that the sun can rise raise your serotonin levels, enter your, your uh, eyelids and your eyes and wake you up gradually so that you wake up uh, with the sun, right? A natural circadian rhythm. This is the easiest way uh, of doing that. But the problem is those curtains with that mechanism like that, that costs, you know, a lot of money for most people. Uh, so most of us just close our curtains or not and let the world do its thing. But looping this back to the problem here, I'm staying in Vietnam, like I said, there's no natural light. And so, because I don't have that, there's just no way of knowing when to wake up. Even if I set an alarm, it doesn't feel like the morning. It feels like I've been woken up at 2 a.m. where I haven't had enough sleep. No matter what time the alarm is, is set for, at the moment when I wake up, it always feels like it's too early because there's no light, there's no indication of what time it is other than my phone. And unless I am disciplined enough to walk out across the room, turn the lights on, and then tell myself, like, right, we're gonna wake up now, it's very difficult, it's very easy as well to just roll over, go back to sleep, and then before you know it, it's 12 o'clock, and you just don't know when to wake up. And it really is that bad, like there's just no natural light in this room at all. There's one balcony, but it's like a sort of inside-outside balcony. There's no way of the sun actually getting into the room. So like I've said, that's how serotonin works, that's why it's important, really important, to have uh, a way of the sun entering your eyelids. Now, what I haven't spoken about is melatonin. Now the way melatonin works, is throughout the day, uh, especially as it gets darker and as you experience less blue or natural light, and when I say blue, I mean, that can mean like a TV screen or a phone, um, the, the less light you experience throughout the evening, the more melatonin starts to rise in your bloodstream and in your body, to the point where you become so tired that you pass out. Now that melatonin will sort of peak in your body some at some point during the night and then start to decline. Now when the melatonin levels decline, and meet the rising serotonin levels. Okay, so if you imagine melatonin will peak like this as you start to experience more darkness in the evening and when the sun goes down. And then it will start to drop off throughout the night as you get closer to the morning. Now, as you, as you see this drop off here, what will happen is, so this is a line melatonin is doing, this is a half-life of melatonin, this slowly, slowly declining downwards. Serotonin will be slowly increasing upwards and where the two meet, Right, where the two lines meet, so you're rising serotonin and you're decreasing melatonin, where, they t where the two hormones meet in the middle, that is the sweet spot for lucid dreams. Uh, and it always has been, that is a very, very good time to have a lucid dream. You're much more likely to do it, no matter which technique you use, and they're likely to last longer and be more vivid as well. So the one challenge I want to issue for this, this episode uh, is just to just try and be more aware of your circadian rhythm and to try and get more in line with it. So try and, if you have natural light, you know, obviously for a few weeks I don't have any natural light here, but if you have natural light, try and let it enter your room in the morning as best as you can. You know, leave the curtains open a crack if you, if you have to, if they're dark curtains, for example. And in the evening, try and turn out all lights and... and um, artificial light sources like your phone, your screens and everything like that and if you have dimmer lights, dimmer switches, turn them down an hour before bed and just try and get into that relaxed state because the more melatonin you can build up in the evening the easier you're gonna find it to fall asleep. This is a really good cure or sort of natural remedy for sleep disorders and insomnia as well. Not all sleep disorders but the vast majority of them can be massively helped, right? Not cured but helped by getting in more in tune with your circadian rhythm. Even if it's hard at first and you have to force yourself to turn off your screens and, your, and dim your lights in the evening, after about a week your body will acclimatise and it will be very easy to continue doing that. You know, you'll start to feel tired when the sun goes down. And your friends might say, well, why are you going to bed so early, you know, eight or nine or even half eight in the evening? But it, you'll feel better for it, you know, when you, if you go to bed when the sun goes down and wake up when the sun rises, you will feel so much better. Alright, so go ahead and subscribe, like, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.